invite uh, Member of Parliament, Catherine West, and floor is yours, madam. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me at the back? Yes. yes. Good. Very good. An MP's voice. I'd just like to thank Fabian, and my colleague, who is also in the Shadow Foreign Office team, for inviting me to say a very few words this afternoon to support the Kashmiri community here in the UK. And I know that my other colleague, Hilary Benn, has also been able to speak because it's a very busy day with uh, His Majesty having been in the House just before you arrived. Um, it's a very busy day for members of Parliament, so I'm sure some of you will bump into others, but it is a real pleasure to have uh, to share this moment together with Fabian and with Hilary Benn. And we know that the question of Kashmir has been ongoing for many, many years and has attracted much international recognition and that's why we have so many experts here this afternoon. And as the Shadow Minister, I firmly believe that no settlement to this long-running division can be found without speaking to and listening to those who really matter, which is the Kashmiri people themselves. It's not and never should be solely seen as a bilateral issue between Pakistan and India. As important as their concerns and their opinions are, it's the Kashmiri people who have, on the whole, suffered, who continue to suffer, and for whom various UN Security Council resolutions have been drafted and passed to support. And the role that I see for the UK, and hopefully for the incoming Labour government, which Fabian and I will be proud to be part of, serving under David Lammy, the Shadow Foreign Secretary at the moment, but to be the, uh, the Foreign Secretary under a Keir Starmer government, and to uphold all parties' respect for international law, human rights, and basic decency. We are very concerned by the challenges that today, day by day, face Kashmiris, including extensive reports of human rights abuses and restrictions on civil society and free media. Universal principles should be upheld on all sides and it is important that humanitarian and human rights organisations have full access so that we can understand and deepen our understanding here in the House of Commons about what the situation is on a day-to-day -day basis. We also unequivocally condemn any attempt by any part to act unilaterally. Doing so inflames tensions and moves us farther away from the peaceful future we all want to see for Kashmir. We also have a role here in the House of Commons with the rest of the international community, some of whom have spoken today, in respecting the security concerns of all partners and in assisting in a pragmatic way in ensuring that these are addressed. No durable and sustainable settlement which would allow the people of Kashmir to flourish can be achieved without acknowledging and addressing this basic fact. It is not for us to say what should happen or seek to impose a political settlement, nor should it be the role of any outside organisation or government to attempt to do so. Far too many Western politicians have attempted to do so, leading to hurt and anger in the region, and indeed among the diaspora communities who call Britain home. That simply cannot be allowed to happen, and we are and always will be adamant that the deeply felt and genuinely held differences on the issue of Kashmir must not be allowed to divide communities here in the UK. The ongoing debate must be allowed to continue with respect and decency for all opinions involved, but critically with the input of Kashmiris themselves. For our part, we as great friends of the community and the Labour Party continue to work with stakeholders like you to give a voice to the community. <laughs>